Hi everyone! In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own design and sublimate it onto a doormat. Here are some of the supplies that you'll need. Obviously a doormat. 100% polyester is the best. I'm using the one from Home Depot and I'll list the details in the description box below. You'll need Photoshop or another graphics program of your choosing, a sublimation printer, a heat press, and all the other equipment that goes along with this process. And stay tuned to the end of this video for a very special announcement. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have an Epson Workforce 7720 and it can print up to 19 by 13 inches on a single sheet. So I'm going to set up my document for those parameters. So I'll click on that and you can see width is 19 height is 13 and 300 dpi and I'll click create. So this is my blank canvas. First thing I'm going to do is insert the word home. So I'll go over to my text icon and I'm using a font called Birch Standard and I've got black selected as my color. So I'll just click on my canvas and I'll type home. Then I'm going to highlight this whole word go up to the font size for pixels and I'm actually going to change this to 3500 and click the check mark. Okay, so now I'll position this on my canvas and we'll put it dead in the center just like that. Alright, so now I need to go back to my text tool and I'll be using a different font and this one is called uh, Victor yeah, Victor script regular. So I'll select that and I don't need that to be this big and font size. So I'll change this one to 500. Then I'll just click on my canvas and then I'll put there's no place like. Click the check mark and then I'm going to position this right here and I do want to make this slightly bigger. I'd like this to come out to about here. So I'm just going to drag that bottom corner. Oops, I guess it got away from me. I notice my computer's running a bit slow because this is such a large document. All right, so I've got that selected and I'll drag that. There we go, perfect. So I'll hit the check mark. So now we've got the words that we want in place. The next thing I want to do is just add some graphics. So I'll go up to File and I'm going to select Place Embedded and I'll be using these beautiful watercolor sunflowers. I purchased these from Design Bundles. So the first one I'm going to use, um, I think I'll use number seven. And again, I'm going to resize that by just grabbing the corner and decreasing it. And I'm going to rotate it just slightly. And I think I'll make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so that looks good. So I'll click to accept that one. And then I'll go back to File, Place Embedded, and then I'll select another graphic and just follow the same steps. Just to reduce the size. And I'm going to place this one here and I'll just rotate it slightly. Great. So now the document or the graphic has been completed, but I do want to make a couple of changes. If we look at these images more closely, they are watercolors, so just by nature they will be a little bit more muted or faded in color. So I'd like to boost this just a little bit to help with the print quality because I'm going to be placing this onto a mat that has more of a gray background and not a white background. So I'm going to go up to my layers palette and I've selected the, the top graphic, this one here, and then I'll hit my shift key or hold down my shift key and select the other one go down to one of my menus here and I'm going to select levels. So keep, keep a close eye 
on this graphic right here. As I take this middle bar, this would be like the midtones, and slide it towards the right, you can see how it darkened up those colors. And because I had selected both of these items at the same time, they both get that same effect. So that looks good, and hopefully, I have not tried this before, but hopefully this will give me a brighter result once I sublimate this onto the mat. So this all looks great. So the next thing to do would be to save it. So you go up to File and Save As. And I've already saved one, so actually we'll just overwrite this one. Say yes. And then the next thing to do is send it to the printer. So I'll just go up to File, select Print. Make sure that my Workforce 7720 has been selected. I'll click on Print Settings. And I don't have a profile set up for this particular size of paper, but if you are interested in learning how to do that, I do have a video and I'll put a link at the top here. And this will definitely be a big time saver for you and it can also help you avoid costly mistakes. So let me take you through what I'm going to do today for the, uh, the larger size paper. So Epson calls this Super B 13 by 19. And I have that loaded into my paper cassette 2, which is my bottom one. I've got landscape selected. Plain paper, bright white paper seems to work well for me. I've got quality set to high, obviously color. I like print preview, and this is where it can help you avoid costly mistakes. Then I go into more options. I like high speed. Some people have issues with that. I don't have issues, so again, it's your personal preference and then I want mirror image selected. So I'm going to hit click OK. And then when I hit print, we'll be leaving the Photoshop settings and you'll see the Epson print settings pop up. So here we go, you saw the Epson there and you can see I've got my paper selected, it's mirrored the image. So it just gives you that last chance to look at it before you send it off to the printer. This looks great, so I'm just going to send that to print. So my husband is being kind enough to help me today. I'm behind the camera and he's going to work the heat press for me. So we've got the mat on the heat press while it's heating up and he's just using a lint roller and just going over every inch of it to remove any dust or lint that may be on there. Because as you know, once you sublimate on that, those will show up as blue specks. The next thing we're doing is we're going to find the center of the mat. So he's just taking a few quick measurements here. And just a helpful tip that we have is just use some sewing pins and just put that in the center dimension. Basically, if you just did the top and the bottom one, that would work for most, uh, most prints but we'll do all four today just to show you what it looks like. Alright, just got one more side to do. Now that we have all those pins in place, we'll take the print and we need to find the centers on the print. So we'll fold it in half and just put a very small pinch on the top and the bottom and then fold it the opposite way and do the exact same thing. Okay, so all we need to do now is put that face down and use those pins as a reference. So that all looks great. And the final step is just use some heat tape and we've already put heat tape on the other three corners. This last one we fold over a tab on the top so that we can easily remove that once the sublimation process has been completed. So we're going to remove the pins and you can see we have the mat on a piece of MDF board, very thin, 
just to help stabilize it. So we'll do this in two pressings. So the heat press is set at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. There's the first press done. And then just slide that over. And it just keeps the image stable because you don't want any ghosting. And here's the final press. Another 60 seconds at 400 degrees. And now for the moment of truth. I hope this came out good. Wow, look at that. Those flowers came out gorgeous. So I think I'll have to remember that tip in the future is just add a little more saturation to the flower images. Let's have a, a closer look. I'll, I'll zoom into the flowers so we can see them. Now this is the first time I've actually done one of these mats and I'm really, really pleased with it. And the weave pattern in the mat just adds to the design. It just looks really beautiful. I'm very, very pleased with it. As I had said previously, this is the first time that I had sublimated on one of these doormats. So I just like to end this video with a quick summary of what I've learned and things to consider for future subbings. So the one thing I did learn was boost the vibrancy of the image, especially if the image is a watercolor or if it's muted. Again, this will be personal preference and there will be some experimenting with this. The other thing that is um, definitely something to consider is centering the image on the doormat. I just went with example one is the one that we used in our subbing and I used the center point um, from the edge of the sunflower image, those leaves, to the end of the letter E. So technically it is centered, but when you look at it visually, it may not look as centered. So in example two, when you can see the blue arrow, maybe I should have centered it on, based on the word home. So using the H and the E fold the paper to center it that way. Again, I'm really happy with the way my mat turned out, but if it's sometimes those little things that can bug people. So it's a personal preference and again, something to consider. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something. Uh, I definitely did. And as a special treat, we would like to go ahead and give this image away for free. I'll go ahead and post it on my website and there'll be a link in the description box below. And I do plan to do some more designs for these mats. Don't have any in my store at the moment, but if you'd like to subscribe and hit like, that would be much appreciated. And that way you'll be notified of future designs. So again, thanks for watching and have a great day.